Hello everyone, this is criminal profiler Pat Brown and welcome to this very bizarre case from Japan. It is a 30 year old case and it's a really crappy case. <laughs> Somebody had to say that. <laughs> Somebody just had to say that. So I might as well be me. Okay. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, the, a body found under a toilet. I mean, it is just very, very peculiar and it's never been solved for many good reasons. So I'm excited to do this case. Uh, May really wanted me to do this case and she can't be here today because she has to work. Um, she's in Taiwan. Um, also, Benny wanted to be here, but he's in Denmark and he's asleep. So, <laughs> oh, that that's that's very that's that's very nice. It's I I, I have I have no wait a minute I have no skills. I have no makeup skills. I have no hair skills. So I just do do stuff because, you know, when I used to work for the networks, I mean, I got all the fancy stuff done, and I was like. Can't have it here. So anyway, um, oh gosh, I'm hot already. Okay. Oh, <laughs> did I really have a straight face on that? Oh my God. Uh, okay. So anyway, I want to welcome everybody who is, or, who is here so far. We have Florence is here. Lisa Ann is here. Uh, Molly's here. K Rob's here. Um, Florence is here. The other Lisa's here. S, uh, Lisa S. Um, let's see who else is here. Did I have, Carrie, did I already say your name? And uh, who else is here? Who else is here? Okay, we got some. We got a lot of. We've been chatting away. Anna's here, uh, <laughs> so we've been, we we have been chatting a lot. So, um, anyway, all right. I want to warn you about one thing with this case. Wait a minute before I do that. Let me let me do let me do the needful because I keep forgetting to do that recently. So let me just let me just do this because the the. the, the I really do need support on this channel because I get highly demonetized. Um, if you want to come to these live, um, the live part of the shows, there are six per month that I do, and they're they are live, but they're live for pay, Patreon patrons only. I do that to keep out the crazy people, and uh, so I can have a very good community. If you want to join, five bucks a month, you can come to all six, um, and it helps the channel. Um, or you can go to uh, you can also come go to other levels, and you can get come to the hangouts and to the phone-ins, all that stuff. You can also, if, you don't, if you're just broke, <laughs> just subscribe. Subscribe to the channel, like it, share it, and the help, it helps me tremendously with the algorithms. And that's my book. I, it's only $2.99 at Amazon, and it supports the channel too. Okay, that's that crap. Okay, see, I'm, I'm in the crap mood tonight. It's like, everything's crappy. <laughs> it's terrible. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll control myself. I will. All right, uh, I will. <clears throat> okay, now let me explain one problem with this case as I go forward. The problem with this case is it's in Japan and the information on this case is very scarce and the information on this case is even questionable how good it is or how correct it is. There's a lot of photos that people put up about this case. Well, not a lot of people. There's like like two or three YouTube shows on it and a couple a couple uh, articles. And they, they throw in pictures that have nothing to actually do with the case. They're just pictures that represent something. Um, so it's really hard to know what's true and what isn't. I did go, I did take, I did go and um, go to, I, I have a, what do you, no, I forgot the name of it. Oh, shoot. I'm getting stupid here. Okay, hold on a second. I have, and they, I would like to represent these people and like them to support my channel, but they haven't come to me yet. Express VPN. Express VPN is one of those things where you can hide where you're at and then you can show up in any country you want. So if you want to watch, like I'm in the US, so I want to watch British shows like uh, Death in Paradise. So what I do is I put on the VPN and I come out of London and then I can see the shows. But from America, I cannot see the shows. So sometimes when I want to get information from specific countries, that may not make it here. Like if I'm talking about an Australian case, I'll put, I'll put the VPN on, I'll go to Sydney, and then I can get more uh, Australian focused uh, information. So I put in Tokyo and I could come up with nothing, probably because I cannot write, what is it called? Con is it kanji? Uh, I'm gonna say something stupid here. I think, but anyway, it was all obviously not in, in a language that I could write. And therefore, I couldn't come up with anything that wasn't already here. So, the information is kind of weak. So just keep that in mind. The, the, the case is still very interesting. I'm still going to analyze it and all that. But just keep that in mind as we go along as to 
information that we might not entirely know. I'm going to use just to describe the case. Um, Wikipedia is not available for this case, um, but there is a pretty good description on medium.com. Um, and the woman who wrote it is Magda Szymanska. She happens to be a Japanese studies graduate. So she was into this case. So anyway, she wrote an article called, and I'll link it below. There's a body in my toilet. Was a well-respected man a sexual deviant or was it the work of somebody else? In other words, was he murdered? A toilet case in the Japanese countryside. I mean, this is just so unusual. Okay, so let me explain this to you. All right. On February 24th of February 1989, so we're talking 30, 30 years ago, right? Yeah, 30 years ago. Um, J Japan uh, officially said goodbye to its, its recent, uh, recently passed emperor, and they had a state funeral and so because of that, many workers were granted like a little vacation time. Uh, so there was, a, there was a prime school teacher and she was one of the lucky ones. So she went on this long weekend right, and spent some time at her family home. Now, when she gets back on February 28th, she goes to the teacher's housing in the village of, okay, I'm just going to probably ruin this again. M Mia Koji, Mia Koji near Fukushima, Fukushima. And you, you, when you hear Fukushima, you think, <clears throat> you're right. Um, that was a nuclear plant disaster. Anyway, uh, so this was a little town near that and they did get kind of decimated with that disaster. Um, everything went well until 5 p.m. when she decides to use her toilet. Something strange catches her eye. In the toilet's small opening, she spots a shoe. Like, a, like she's going to do something in her toilet. <laughs> I don't want to get graphic here, but she's going to go do something in her toilet and she spots the shoe. Now, um, let me, let me just give you a little, uh, I'll, I'll give you a, to <laughs> a toilet tour. <laughs> this is going to be a fun show. I swear to God, a toilet tour. Um, this is a squat toilet and, and I'm going to show you some toilets. All right. I know this is, this is a little gross because the pictures are really gross because somebody needs to clean these toilets. All right, here's, a, here's one of the toilets. Ew, somebody needs to clean that toilet. And, and one of the things that I find, I, I get a little confused about, again, because I can't get the information. And you can, you can chime in on this and see if you can figure it out. Over to the left side is where the hole is, where the water comes up and goes down. Okay, here's another toilet. That's another version of a squat toilet. Here is another one. Um, and this looks like it's more of an outhouse version. And this is important because it's, it's, it's hard to know whether she was, it get, gets confusing as to where the toilet was. And I'll get into that in a bit. That's another version. Here, here is another version. You see where the hole is? It's usually up toward the front of the toilet. Um, and here is a fancier version, like something halfway decent. And that's most likely an inside squat toilet. Now, um, there is a question as to, let's see if I can find the picture of this, as to whether, okay, where did I put the picture? Uh oh, here it is. All right. So she goes to use the toilet. Now, she has a private toilet. So apparently where she's staying with this teacher's, teacher's dorm kind of thing, they're not sharing toilets. Each one of the rooms apparently has their own toilet. Um, that's, that's one version I heard. So you see how it says indoor on the right? So she'd be going, she'd be squatting down and facing, she would be facing the part that's the, 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 the rectangle. If you're in Japan, you're supposed to do this correctly uh, or basically any place. You're supposed to face that. Your butt's supposed to be toward the door. So anyway, you're supposed to face that. And um, therefore, whatever you're doing, well, number one goes straight down. Number two goes kind of backwards. And so then you have to wash it well. Anyway, that's indoor. So she would be going there and you can see then it, it goes down uh, and comes around to the outdoor part, which is where they come and they take the, they take the, um, there's, they take a top off of there that is covered and they take the cover off and then they, they f uh, flush out whatever's in there. So they have this, you know, sewage team that comes along. Uh, there was another site that said it was, it was completely an outdoor toilet, like, like a, um, um, Geez, what is it called? <laughs> an outhousey thing, like an outhouse version. Uh, so it wasn't actually inside, it was outside. And that's very important as to 
that does actually make a big difference. Um, it seems like most of the information leans toward the indoor, that she actually had an indoor toilet and then out, you know, the stuff flushed outside and then they clean it from the outside. If it were a completely outside toilet, or the outhouse version, it would be a di whole different bunch of information uh, that would lead to maybe different conclusions. So that's why I point out that the, it's really sketchy information we get. But anyway, you can even see here, that's theoretically where she went to the bathroom and that's where the guy is and that's where they, they flush out the place on this side. Now, what, what, what I can't understand here is it looks like the hole is here. And so, so she goes to the bathroom and she looks down this hole and she sees the shoe floating around down here, okay? Only I've never seen any of the toilets have a hole at this end. At this end, it's usually at this end, so I don't understand that. I, I, it, so I don't know if the, if all the the few stories I've read are just the, they're wrong about something, or I've just never seen that kind of toilet. I don't know. But usually, the all the ones I showed you, the the hole is here. Whoops, sorry. Uh, right there. It's usually there. And then it goes down here. But somehow she supposedly saw it here. I don't get it. Okay. But anyway, the theory is, or the story is, not the theory, the story is she looks down, she sees a shoe floating around. And she's like, what? And she freaks out. And she gets very confused. And um, and so supposedly she goes outside and, and, and looks at the outside part. And there's, it, the cover is off. And she looks down. She sees a foot. At which point they call the police. That's the story. Okay, so they arrive. The man inside the toilet is dead. He actually has been dead for two days. All right. Now, they can't get him actually out of this thing because uh, it's into the ground. So they end up having to use a, use, use a, a mechanical tools to remove this whole thing from the ground to get him out. Uh, and, they, of course, they find his body then in a whole lot of unfortunate you know, waste and they have to take it and wash it a bunch of times before they can do the examination, the autopsy. And they come up with the cause of death. The cause of death is hypothermia. So he was not dead when he went in here. He died in here from hypothermia. He got cold, froze, and died. Okay. Now, there were no signs of injuries except for tiny little light scratches on his knees and on an elbow. That, that's very important. So almost no injuries whatsoever, just little scratches. And it's just, he'd been dead for two days, by the way. So let me, let me show you the, um, sort of the timeline on this. All right, let's see. Okay. Uh, over here, you'll see the timeline. She goes, the girl, the teacher goes on leave here. And she's gone all the way here. And then she returns on here. This is when he died. He died two days before she arrived home. But he disappeared on the 24th to be found on the 20, died on the 26th and found on the 28th. That's the theory on this. So on the 24th, he's, he's talking to his dad and he says, it's, I got to do some errands. And he leaves at noonish. So we're not talking about in the middle of the night. We're talking about noonish. And he doesn't come home. Now, th this is a picture of a car. <laughs> I have no idea if this has anything, if this is the real car or this is just a picture of a car. Supposedly, again, supposedly this car was found parked nearby the actual dormitory. Like, and I don't know how nearby it is. Are we talking about right outside or a little bit down, down the way? There's no information on that, but supposedly at the dormitory. Okay. Now let's take a look at this. All right. So this again is a kind of a picture. I just have a picture of an inside. If she were inside, if it were an inside uh, toilet, then she'd go to the bathroom here. Again, you see where that, that hole is up here? I don't understand this. Anyway, there's a shoe. Once it started, you know, lots of water coming in here, the shoe would float. So she looked down. See where she supposedly looks down, which I don't understand, and sees a shoe. And he is, this is what his body looked like. It was curled up in the bottom of this pipe okay and he was he did not have a shirt on he had pants on no shoes one shoe floating okay and on his chest this is important on his chest he has his coat folded up and held to him okay 
gets weirder and weirder by the minute. <laughs> All right. So anyway, that's where he is. Now, let, let me show you some more about this extremely weird case. All right. Now, this supposedly, oh, let me, let me tell you one more thing uh, about his name, by the way. All right. I put his name is Noyuk, no, Naoyuki. I don't know how to pronounce it. O, Ogino or Ogino. But everybody keeps saying Kano for his last name. Again, I have no idea what is actual, what, what's true and what isn't true. I'm going to call him Kano just because I can't pronounce the other one. <laughs> so I'm going to call him Kano. All right. Now, this is Kano's house up here. So then he goes, this is a map, which is extraordinarily crappy map. Oh, I used that word again. <laughs> it's stuck in my head. Okay. The map is useless. Can't see how far anything is. It's just a general description. I don't know who put it together. But here's his house. And apparently he drove to her place, which is here. That's a teacher's place. And that's where his body was found. Now, remember there's a shoe in the toilet, right? That's what she saw. But there was only one shoe in the toilet. The other shoe, now this guy's, this second shoe thing is supposedly, I'm going to say this is what, supposedly around about there. Now, this is a big map, so it's supposedly quite a ways from where the body was. And if you see his house is up here. Now, I had to move the map around to try to even get something that made any sense. So it looks like his house, the house is here. I got to do my finger right. Hold on a second. Okay, comes down here to her dormitory, ends up in her toilet, under the toilet. But his shoe is up here. And it's this actually, I think, is an actual picture of where the shoe was. It's near, it's near a river. Um, and I don't know what kind of shoe it was. I really wanted to know. Was it, was it a loafer type shoe with, you know, that would slip off your feet easily? What, what like a work shoe? Like a, no. Was it, was it a tie shoe? I don't know. I don't know what they wore in Japan professionally 30 years ago. Also, if it was his day off, apparently. So what did he put on his feet? I don't know what his shoes were. That's not, not stated any place. And I think that photo, <laughs> no, it looks like an armadillo. So I'm not going to say, we don't know what the shoe looks like. So all we know is he left his house about noon, came down here. We don't know. We don't know if he went other places. But his body was found under the toilet and his and his and his shoe was found a ways away. One shoe. The other shoe's in the toilet. Which is very significant. I don't know entirely what the significance is. And I'm gonna tell you right now, I haven't solved this case. I'm going to analyze this case and try to bring out the points, but it's so weird that it's hard to actually analyze extremely well all right so that's what happened so she finds him under the, she sees the foot they, they come they tear out the place and they find he's died of hypothermia clutching the coat to his bare chest one shoe one shoe inside the sewage tank there and one shoe somewhere oops, out there by a river <laughs> okay that's what they got all right so we're going to start looking at the theories on uh, what in the heck <laughs> what, wait, wait. <laughs> I'm not impressed with Japanese plumbing. Well, you know, most Japanese now are using the sit toilets. Um, and I spend a lot of time traveling. And I wish Annie were here because Annie was with me in Mongolia. And good God, we used a lot of squat version toilets and just holes in a piece in a wooden platform out out in the out in the pasture and we had such bad winds one day the ladies had to hold the toilet the 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 the, the toilet building up while the person went to the bathroom and otherwise the building fell over <laughs> so, we've been in some i've been in some bad toilets uh, i've traveled in india i've traveled in mongolia china oh lord um i've traveled in morocco and egypt been in a lot of squat toilets i prefer the sitting type Mm, I do. Okay. So anyway, but unfortunately, that's the way. <laughs> Those toilet pictures look worse than crime scene photos. Yeah, they're not really pleasant, are they? Mm, no, they aren't. Okay, so, oh, this is a good point. Lisa says, the mystery stranded shoe sounds like the mystery stranded sock in the Darley Routier case. Yes, and this is one of these things that, the Darley Routier case is very hard to explain why, and if you haven't seen that case yet, look on my Look on my um, case, the the, the uh, playlist, and you'll see my case files, Darlie Routier, I've already done, 
and I still can't explain the sock. Everything points to Darley, but that sock is sitting out there for no reason. Uh, in this case, we've got an, we've got a, a shoe out there, and the question is, when did the shoe end up there? There might be more of an explanation in this case, maybe. Okay. <laughs> I'm glad I finished lunch before the show started. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it is a little bit um, unsettling for the old tummy. All right then. All right, so now let's look at some of the other issues in this case because it is just, uh, I mean, it is it is really fascinating. Okay, because, okay, so I want to get rid of one, one problem people have with this case. All right, let me see if... Okay, let's just look at this. All right, there are some people who say, oh, it's impossible for him to have gotten in there. Folks, he got in there. Somehow he got in there. Somehow the body ended up there. It's not impossible, impossible because he is there. It may look impossible, but he is there. So therefore it happened. <laughs> you can't take away what happened because you can't explain how it happened. The guy's in the toilet. There's no question. Uh, and they had to break the, plate, the thing up to get him out. So sim simple fact is he was alive at one point, and then he ended up dead in, a, uh, in, the, in the pipes under a toilet. So he ended up there. That's a fact. That's, that's not a fiction. That's a fact. That's not a guess. It's a fact. So let's get away from that. That's what happened. All right. So he's in the toilet. Now, let's look at some of the theories about how he ended up in the toilet. All right, one of the theories, one of the major theories that this, this was an accidental death. And the theory that the police had was that he was a pervert, that he crawled in here, he got in here, he, like, he liked the girl because he knew the teacher. They actually knew each other, by the way. She had a boyfriend, but he, they, the boyfriend and the teacher and he actually got along, and um, at least in theory. and. They even there were even some strange calls to the girl or the teacher recently. They got some like like weird calls, creepy calls, and the boyfriend and he worked to you know report that to the police and all of this. But the creepy calls may have made the police think maybe the guy made him, you know. So anyway, even though he did report them with the boyfriend, so it seemed like they were okay together. These three, they weren't like you know in competition or anything. But we don't know. So anyway. The police sort of came up with this concept because they couldn't come up with anything better that he wanted to see her lady parts mm -hmm, as she squatted over the toilet. So he crawled down here specifically so he could look up at her lady parts. Okay. Um, I, I, there are many cases where men actually do this. They usually put a hole in the wall though because that's a lot easier. Um, sometimes they film women going to the bathroom, but I have never heard of a case where a guy would go underneath a toilet to look up because could it happen? Well, if you, you know, I, you know, I have unfortunately studied a whole lot of pornography because I've been in this business. So I know there are men and women who like to see people pee and poop. That's just a thing. Um, that got me demonetized. Ah, oh, talking about naughty things like that and kind of nasty things. Anyway, um, so he could be under there going, oh, how cool. She's doing these things and I'm underneath. Ha ha. Okay. In theory, <laughs> that could be possible. However, that's a hell of a difficult way to view this. So it's unlikely, improbable, but possible. But let's go back to the timeline. All right, let's go back to a timeline. Um, where'd my timeline go? Oh, here it is. Okay. So on the 24th is when he went missing. And on the 24th is when the teacher went on vacation. She was actually had left or was leaving at the time. So unless he like was trying to get in a last little thrill before she went out of town, like she's got to be peeing at 1 p.m. <laughs> I'm going to crawl in the toilet and get that last, last look before she takes off. Unless he was doing that, it seems improbable that he would crawl in the toilet at any time during that day when she might have already left. So he'd have to know exactly when she's leaving and exactly when she needs to pee before she goes. I mean, it's just, and it's, and it's, and it's, and what day is? Uh, it's February. It's cold. It's cold out there. It's, this is Japan in February. It's not warm. 
okay? It's cold. Uh, there's even snow on the ground. So for him to want to go into a very cold pipe in free, very cold temperature that may have feces in it and other assorted things, um, to peep up at her hoping that just before she leaves on vacation, she's going to He's going to look at her lady parts and she might do her thing on him. I mean, really? I mean, very, very unlikely. I'm having trouble with that theory. All right. So let's go back to the next theory. All right. Now, the next theory is this. All right. The theory is, and this gets really confusing. Okay, let me, let me see if I can find it because it's really a really bizarre theory. There was, oh, she doesn't even have it here. Does she not have it here? I don't even see it listed here. So apparently, there's a whole bunch of politics going on. And the mayor uh, is trying, there's a whole bunch of things over nuclear power plants and whether they should have them or not have them. So the claim is this guy, who is not a big, big fellow in any of the politics, somehow knew something or was against something, like against the power, the nuclear power plant. So they decided to kill him. <laughs> so instead of just like, shooting him, stabbing him, hitting him over the head or whatever, they decide they're going to stuff the dude down a toilet. Really? I mean, that that's how you're going to commit the crime? I mean, I in all of history, I don't think I've ever heard of a murder being com committed this way, that they would go to all this work and try, they'd have to drag him. Well, first of all, he's to leave the house. Then they have to somehow catch up with him. Have, how, and, they, and he's at the dormitory. So what, they're hiding there? They knew where he was going? And then they, they opened up the, 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 um, the, the cover and they stuffed his body down. Now, mind you, he's got no injuries. He's got a few scratches on his elbow and his, on his knees. He has no injuries. So how are you going to stuff a wiggling, fighting man into that hole without some kind of ex more injuries? That's probably unlikely. So then you could say, oh, well, you know, they knocked him out. Okay, they could have done that. Then they would have to stuff him down the hole. And he would have, and, and it, it's kind of hard to stuff a guy down that hole. It's very, very narrow. Um, let me just show you one picture because I think this is kind of a clue of why it would be hard. It would be unlikely that they, let's say they knocked him out. Let's say they killed him first. First of all, he died of hope, hypothermia. So they know that from the autopsy. But let's say they knocked him out and they shove him in there. He would have to then wake up and say, so, oh, and he would have like some kind of injury. He'd have to like, like a smashed in like head or something. And then he'd have to wake up and then be stuck in there. Um, <laughs> it really doesn't work. Along with the fact that the guy, I mean, the guy wasn't a big guy in the world. So it's not, it's not like he, he was going to be involved in, in nu nuclear stuff. I mean, yeah, just unlikely. Okay. The third possibility, and I think this was a kind of a good one. Benny came up with this one, um, and he said he can't be here tonight, but this is a theory he came up with, and it's reasonable. Um, and that's hypothermia causes paradox, paradoxical undressing. So sometimes when you get really super, super cold, you're, you suddenly feel super, super hot, and, and then you start ripping all your clothes off, right? And, and then there's even this weirder thing, which Benny pointed out, which I think is very smart, that sometimes when you get to that point, then you actually try to burrow into something to keep warm, okay? Um, and the Benny thought maybe he burrowed, he went down this pipe to keep warm, to keep away from the, the cold air. Um, okay, possible. All right. Um, uh, and he, but here's the problem I have with that theory. It's, he left, first of all, he left at noon, so my guess is somewhere, somewhere, he wasn't seen any place else. So he must have gone relatively quickly to the dormitory. Um, and yes, it was cold, but, and, and supposedly he, the key of the car was in the ignition. So but Benny was saying, maybe, you know, he, 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 he said maybe he fell in the river somehow because there was a river nearby. Somehow he got wet. So therefore you get more hypothermic. Then he went to the car and the car would start. So, oh my God, I'm stuck here. And people away on vacation, so a lot of the dormitory, the people who stayed there, like this, his friend, would be, not be there. Um, now he's overly cold, so he ends up with this paradoxical disrobing of his clothes, and then he seeks some kind of shelter, and the only thing he can find is 
this this toilet <laughs> and this pipe going into a toilet so he crawls in there and then he gets stuck and then he dies of hypothermia all right the problem i have with this is there's a number of problems but one of them is that when you're looking at evidence it is a little difficult or problematic shall i say to come up with ideas that we don't know happened like why would he end up in the river if he's going to see his friend at the dormitory he's got no reason to be in a river we're not talking about a drunk dude because you know when you have college students who get really drunk and they're rolling around at night and they go to pee in a river and they fall in that may may be true but there's absolutely no reason during the daytime that it makes any sense he ends up drown getting wet in a river there's no there's no reason for that um so and he had a coat so unless he completely uh submerged himself and got that cold with the coat on he he would you know unlikely to be that cold yes it was a cold day yes but he had a coat so if he drove there and his car died for example and it wouldn't work um then and i don't know that the car didn't work the key was in the ignition i don't understand about the key in the ignition that's another piece of information we don't have there's a couple theories he left the key in the ignition because he was just going to run and do something and come back like maybe he's going to knock on her door and say have you left yet and then she didn't answer so he ran was going to run back to the car that's possible or he could have left the car running and then had this disaster and the car died while he had the disaster that's another possibility but if he if he got wet and ran back to his car likely that the car would still be functional then he could get heat in the car and he could drive home so i don't see any reason for that um i don't know how far out in the countryside he was that's another question um because he could walk to something if something was near but we have i have no information on how near anything was except this dormitory which supposedly people had gone away on vacation so maybe it was completely empty and he couldn't access a dormitory to get warm uh he couldn't knock on anybody's door it's possible but it's again improbable and you have to get to a pretty bad state to choose to crawl into a toilet as opposed to many other places you could crawl into to get some kind of relief um now if it were an outdoor toilet um it was like a like a, a an outhouse you could just open the door and just sit in there you could do that but you wouldn't be under it you know so why did he get under the toilet so that was i thought benny came up with very interesting a very interesting theory and i respect that because he you know he was thinking about what are all the possibilities but i cannot come up with evidence to support that nor do i come up with evidence to support that somebody murdered him over some you know he's a 26 year old guy who's not involved in anything spectacular why they would kill him and then kill him that way and stuff him down a toilet kind of makes zero sense to me all right so now we have another thought here all right let me let me check in on you guys all right um well th this is true carrie benny's theory is a little like elisa lamb and if if you if you're not familiar with elisa lamb i did a show on her uh she's the one the woman who was coming from canada and she was in a this weird hotel kind of a sketchy hotel and she was in the elevator and acting really weird like she was seeing things that weren't there and she was very paranoid and she ended up up on the roof in the water tanks um very strange but she was also psychotic clearly psychotic and if you're clearly psychotic you'd have another you know you might actually do things that are completely bizarre um <laughs> maybe he would rather pee in the river than in that thing <laughs> uh, i don't know if that thing was outside or inside her and uh, inside the door inside her room so if it was attached to her room he wouldn't have access to it unless she left the door open uh, theoretically theoretically she could have left the door open and said hey you know if you, if you come by you can you can stay at my place or you can it's possible she could have given him a key and he, he could access it and go to the bathroom inside um or if he couldn't he needed to pee hey it's like dude he doesn't need to go to a river to pee he can just pee outside his car in the woods i mean you know <laughs> i don't give a crap so I, I i find it hard to believe unless he were actually near the river for some other reason and there's there's pretty much no reason for him to be there um now let's see uh 
I always want to look, check it. When you said he knew her, I thought it must be per, a perverted accidental death, but maybe not if she was going away. Well, there's a lot of other ways to be perverted other than crawling into something like that to want to look at her lady parts. And, and it's just really, really bizarre, uh, really bizarre. Um, so, okay, let's go to the other possibilities. Now, I'm, this, is, this is him. This is going to be him here. Okay, so... This is going to be the, the teacher, and this is going to be her boyfriend. Now, there's some theory that some people say, well, you know, she saw this shoe in there, which I don't even understand how she saw, but okay, she saw the shoe, and she went, ah, and then she, but she ran out to check the other side. And a lot of people say, well, I don't know why she would do that unless she knew something. And, and maybe she killed him. She killed him. Maybe he was in on it. Okay. But there's no particular reason why they would do that. And also, again, we're talking about murder. And if we're talking about murder, somebody had to stuff him down that hole without any injuries. And that is highly unlikely. He would have a fracture to the skull if they brained him. There would have to be some reason they could get him down that thing. Um, and if they killed him completely, when they put him down there, here's something that's, that's important to recognize. Okay, let me find it. Um, if they actually killed him, well, he, see, he had hypothermia, so he didn't die of being killed. And then, you know, he was ki he wasn't dead before he went in. But let's say, let's say he was dead before he went in, just to make an argument here. Um, if he was dead before he went in, and he's coming down that pipe, he is not moving from that position to the other position. He's not going from that to this, because he'd be dead. Okay, he can't do it. He'd just be squashed. He'd be squashed right here. His head would be squashed, and that he he'd be over right just down, right here. He wouldn't be over here. It is clear that he came down, and somehow got as he was coming down was able to get into this position. All right. So now, oh, I'm so hot tonight. Ooh. Hold on a second. I'm taking a drink. Okay. Now I'm going to talk about crime reconstruction. All right, because I did one. Because I had to understand uh, first psychotic break. Not that we know of. He's a well-respected, you know, seemed like nothing was particularly wrong with him at all. There's no, <laughs> that it does, it does stink. But I know, I see no, there's no evidence of him having any psychotic break. Okay, could happen, but I'm not convinced. And here's, I'm going to show you why I'm not convinced. All right. So here is a picture, and this is a, a, it does have the centimeters and all that, exactly, you know, what, how, why this is, how, let's see if I can do my hand this way, why that is coming down. Wait a minute, let me show you, let me show you if I can the, so he's coming down, they did an actual re, reenact, I'd say a reenactment. I, I don't know how accurate it was, because this came off of a program which I could not locate because of it being you know, not a U.S. program, I guess. So anyway, this supposedly is an example of the pipe and how tight it would be. Some people say it's impossible for his shoulders to have gone in there. But again, he's down there. His shoulders went through. Regardless of whether you think it can't happen, it happened. All right. So then they, they showed him going down this chute, right? I mean, down the pipe. Now, in my opinion, this is, this is impossible because to end up in this position... He has got to come down the pipe this way he, to be able to, because it's so tight, he's got to come down and go around this way. He couldn't, if he came down here, first of all, he'd have to flex his back like you wouldn't believe. Then he'd have to get here. Then he'd have to f turn over. All right. Now, I measured this out in my bedroom. Okay, I forgot to take my drink. Hold on. Ah, the lights. Okay. I measured this out in my bedroom and I went through the motions of how far down it was and getting getting on my back and looking at how tight it was and all this. It was possible to come down here. What was interesting is that your feet would still stick out up here and your hands are down here. So your feet are out, your hands are down. Now he couldn't have come down foot first because then again, he wouldn't be in this situation. He went down head first and his hands were here, his feet were out of that. Um, do I have a picture of the feet? Hold on a second. 
Do I have a picture of the feet out of that? Let me see. Uh, okay, they show him going in this way. And then they're showing him there basically like that, okay? that That's kind of how he went in. But I don't agree with that. He did not have, I do not believe he had his hands by his side. Because first of all, that would add width. And I don't think he could do that. I think the hands were definitely down. And he, it, it, it's nonsensical that he would have his hands like that. That would be only if somebody put him in there. And again, I don't believe anybody put him in there. So, um, without his consent. Um, so, let's look at this again. His hands are down here. So, he's coming down like this. And this, no. No. This, yes. This is how he came down. So, I looked at that and I said, okay, so I can see my feet are sticking out. I can see my hands are down here. So, I'm landing kind of like, like this, okay? Now, at that point... He has to slide into this position. It's not easy, but if you're landing on your damn head over here, you've got to kind of push yourself this way, okay? Um, he's strong. I mean, I'm not a gymnast. I probably would just land on my head and, and just stay down here and crush my head in. <laughs> but apparently he found a way to get in this position. Now, I looked at, I measured this whole thing out and I'm laying in this position and guess what I couldn't do? Move. I could not move. I could not twist around this way or that way. I couldn't turn over. When he got to this position, he was stuck. He could not get himself out of it. All right. So this is why they found him in this position. Now, now there's some really interesting things about this. One is, how did one shoe end up above his? his head okay so that's where the shoe was seen so apparently you know what happens is after there's water in this thing yes you get a shoe you can end up with a shoe above your head he's probably dead by then but that's where the shoe might be okay so the shoe is floating around but where is the other shoe the other shoe is past his car on the other side somewhere out near near halfway to a river so how does that happen? Why doesn't he even have his shoes on? That's another question. Why doesn't he have shoes on his feet? And he doesn't have socks either. I find that interesting. And he has no shirt. But he's clutching. Let me go. Let me go to this picture. He's clutching to his chest. A his coat. His coat clutched to his chest. So now, I'm just going to ask you, why do you think his coat is on his chest? Uh, I do not know. <laughs> I, I told you, that the information is not great on this case. Um, it's hard to believe someone will go willingly in there because it's gross. And two, you'd have to have no issues with claustrophobia. Yes, there's actually a, a mental issue with, there's a, I, I can't remember the, the, the word, but it's the opposite of claustrophobia, where you love to be in enclosed places. So you're like, oh, I can't wait to get into that little place. And that's, sometimes we do see that happen. But I still have problems with this case, and I'll show you why. All right. Okay, Rob. Okay. Here's an interesting point. And you're saying lots of less, but it's not lots of less. Actually, there's some rational thinking here. And it's you. Um... I solved it. He lost his shoe and went in there to get it. Okay. That's an interesting point, actually. Because there, theoretically, there has to be a reason. If he's not looking up and, and peep, being a peeping Tom, okay, if he's not doing that, then why is he in there? Now, the hypothermia thing, maybe, but there's, there's weird things happening in many places that don't make sense for that. And I'm going to explain again why I think there's there's something else here so he's got one shoe here so he let's say so the concept is okay he dropped his shoe in so he went to get his shoe okay I, it was one of the reasons I wanted to know how expensive was that shoe <laughs> you know because if you if you got some really cheap ten dollar loafers on you're really gonna you're not gonna go in there for them but if you have your the one pair of wonderful shoes Sorry, I'm burping. Hold on a second. <laughs> I'm so elegant, aren't I? If you have 
you know, we're talking 30 years ago, before people had 10 or 20 pairs of shoes, right? You had, sometimes you had one gorgeous pair of shoes that you spent, you saved up for, or your, your parents gave you when you graduated college or whatever it was. You had this one amazing pair of shoes. If you drop that shoe in there for some reason, you might want to get it. But, the other shoe is on the other side of the vehicle. So that doesn't make sense. So you drop one, what, what happened to the other shoe? Why is the other shoe way over someplace? That, that's questionable. Okay, so and that, that's a problem. The other thing is I don't understand the, 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 the lack of socks. Now maybe they just didn't mention he had socks on. Maybe he took the socks off. That is the question. All right, so let's see what else you have to say here. Um, could some sort of suction pull them in? No, absolutely not. He had to work his way in there. Um, let's see. Uh, maybe he did go in for the shoe, got his arm caught, and got sucked in. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna point out a thing here. Okay, so I want to talk about the coat. He t the coat is not on him. So I'm gonna I'm gonna say Benny has a reasonable theory and. <laughs> You're all are terrible. That toilet sucks. Oh my God. Okay. I want to read what Lisa has, <laughs> Lisa has to say. There's another case with a guy who died, died st stuck headfirst in a rolled up gym mat where a theory is that he was trying to retrieve his shoe from the bottom of the rolled up mat. Yes. And I haven't examined that case yet because some people say he was murdered. Uh, but I tend to think he probably was doing exactly what you say. I haven't examined it. So don't, don't quote me on that. But if you, you know, some reason you're doing something and you drop your shoe in there and those shoes, you're talking about athletic shoes that guys buy that are like, like, you know, my shoes are off Amazon. So, you know, <laughs> and, and they're not worth a lot, but you know, guys like those really cool, expensive Nike shoes and all that crap. So you drop your shoe down in there, it's worth $200. You might go down and get it. It's stupid, but you're a teenager. So you do stupid things. So yes, this guy could have, but my problem is with the other shoe. If, if he was found with one shoe on and one shoe floating, I would go with that, but that's not what happened. So there's a problem there. Okay, so now he's got, he's got a bunch of things that are odd. One shoe here and one shoe there, no shirt on. Nobody has mentioned where his shirt is. So this bugs the heck out of me. And I want to point out that when you're analyzing cases where you don't have access to the police reports, or at least even decent reports, uh, there may be an explanation for where the heck his shirt is, but I don't have it. So I just know he didn't have his shirt on. Um, which again, Benny would say, well, he took the shirt off because he's hypothermic. And that's reasonable. He, he pulled off his jacket, he pulled off his shirt, he took off his shoes, he left his pants on. And usually the, when you're hypothermic, those, those pants annoy the hell out of you as well. So usually you find naked people. And that's why sometimes people think they were raped if they're female, even if they're male, that they were raped because they're naked in the middle of somewhere. And they're like, oh my God, see somebody ripped their clothes off. But it is what, it is that paradoxical undressing thing. So I would think he would take off his pants as well, but he has his pants on. So now, I'm looking at this going, okay, but he took his jacket off, his coat. Now, coats are expensive. So he might have taken, if, let's assume he arrived here, not with hypothermia, but he was here to, for some reason, and for some reason, because we're just going to go with some reason because we don't know what the hell it is, some reason decided he had to go down here. It's a dirty place. So he says to himself, I'm going to take my, I'm not going to wear my coat in there because I don't want to ru ruin my coat. And I don't, I like the shirt. <laughs> I'm going to take the shirt off and I'm going to, I'm going to take my shoes. Maybe he takes his shoes off, but maybe he doesn't because they're, they're, um, he's got his pants on. Now it's possible he took his shoes off. Maybe he did. Um, and then his socks off too. Or maybe he did. Maybe he had his shoes on without socks on because he ran out of the house. I don't know. This is a problem. I don't know where the hell the socks are. <laughs> I would like to talk to the family. Does the dude wear socks? You know, where are the socks? Maybe the police report has where the socks are. I don't know. And that's why it's hard to analyze this case. But okay. So let's say he takes off his coat and his shirt because 
He doesn't want to ruin them. Now, here is my point about this. When I looked at this, generally speaking, the, the feet are mostly out. So if he were wearing his pants, the pants would mostly be out. It is the upper body that would be in. That would be the body that might contact the walls, which might not be clean. And that might be what he was worried about. So he removed those things so he could then go down here and access something here without ruining all his clothes. Now, why would he do that? And this is, this is the real problem. Why in the hell would he do that? And the shoe thing is possible, except his other shoe is so far away. It doesn't really make sense, but why would one shoe be in there, but not two? So in other words, the shoe would have to go down before he went down. So he had to be taking off his shoes and chucking them down. <laughs> that doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Um, if he was paradoxically undressing, his both his shoes would be in the same place and not, he wouldn't be running around with one shoe on and one shoe off. That's just unlikely. And then he jumps in there and he's still got one shoe on, but he doesn't have his, you know, but his coat ends up down there too. So now there's a coat issue and he's clutching the coat. Now, some people think he was dressed in the coat without the shirt. Okay, so he takes off a shirt and coat, but somehow he still puts a coat back on. And then he gets down here and it gets, it gets paradoxical undressing there. So he rips his coat off. Well, guess what? You can't get your coat off down there. You can't, you cannot move down there. It's impossible. So he can't take the coat off. So how does the coat get in his arms? All right, let's see. Um, maybe he was running from someone or a few men lost his shoe and hid in the pipe. Okay, let me let me think about this, Lisa. All right, so he was running, his shoe fell off, okay, and then he hid in the pipe with the one shoe on. Okay, possibly, but then why isn't he wearing his shirt and his coat? That's the question I have. Maybe he took it off to fit in there. All right like that one lisa see this is this is really um a case to super analyze and i don't think we're going to come up with the answer but it's interesting so okay so he could that's a great point lisa i love that okay so yeah the coat was the coat bulky because it's winter mind you it's not it, it doesn't say here we go again with no information it doesn't say what kind of coat was he wearing like a, a, a sports jacket you know it's in the middle of winter um was he wearing a, a suit jacket Again, it's his day off. I apparently wasn't going to work. So it would be more likely he was wearing a some kind of thicker jacket. And you're correct. He couldn't fit in there with that jacket on. So very good, Lisa. All right. So he has to take the jacket off to get in there. But then how does the jacket get in there with him? And that's the next curious thing. Okay. He had no time to worry about clothes. Well, yeah, but he does. He has to. There are choices. No, I, I, I don't think so. I mean, going, running to save your life and then taking off your jacket and throwing, is he, he has the jacket with him. So if he takes it off to get in, the jacket ends up in with him. That's what makes no sense. So there's things here that just don't work out. Uh, he figured he'd let me hide here until they give up finding me. And then he fell asleep and froze could happen. But again, I have a problem with a shoe. I have a problem with this jacket. Um, and I have a problem with how he got in there. And here is a concept that I have, and I'm not, I'm not going to swear by this because I, again, I'm missing so much information, but here's something that bugs me. Now here is something that was pointed out. I thought about this before I saw it. And then I'm like, I'm glad I saw this. All right. So this is the point. All right. If he goes down on his own, there he goes without the shirt, without the jacket, without in this picture, without the shoes. And, and, and he's doing it by himself. In which case, when he gets down there, he cannot access the jacket. He cannot access the shoes. Or any, he cannot, especially the jacket, he cannot access a jacket if he goes down by himself without a jacket. That's a physical impossibility. Here we have a different situation. 
here we have somebody helping him go down. Now, this is where I think it gets interesting. If for some reason somebody was with him and helped him get down there, because let's, because uh, as I point out, um, his feet would stick up and his, uh, you know, you can touch the ground there, your feet will still be sticking out to some extent. All right. So you may think, okay, let's say he lost something down there. Um, like his car keys, something like that. He says, oh my God, the car keys fell down there, you know? And he says, oh, I'm going to go down and get my car keys. And the guy says, you can't get down there. And he goes, yeah, okay, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to, I'm going to get my head in there or my hands so I can get the keys. You hold on, you hold on to my legs so that I don't go too, uh, it's not too far down. So um, you just hold my legs and keep a hold on them and I'll grab the keys and then I'll, you know, I'll get them up to you and, and, you know, or I'll hold on to them and then you pull me out. Okay. But somewhere along the way, the guy can't hold on to him. And so he loses his grip. It's also possible in losing the grip, he could also lose a shoe off his foot and it could drop into, it could follow him in. Maybe Watts why the shoe is in there. Now, once he's down there, and I, I, I'm having trouble with the car key thing because I'm like, really? I mean, because the car keys were there. So I'm like, I still don't know why he's in there. Uh, he could have dropped the car keys and it's possible he could have, with one hand, managed to get the car keys back to the guy up here and say, here's the car keys, grab hold of them. Now pull me out. And the guy couldn't pull him out. So, so look at this situation. Now, he's down here if he's stuck down there because he he might think he might tell the guy look just let go of me now because there's no way i can get back you, you can't hold on to me i didn't realize you couldn't pull me back out but okay now i'm down here i'm going to turn around i'm going to turn around and i'm going to then get my head up this way and then i can you can you can i put my hands up and you'll grab me and pull me out only he couldn't do it because it's impossible so now he's stuck down here He's stuck down there in this place. And he's like, crap, I cannot turn around. And he's very cold. He might say, throw me down the jacket. Throw me down my coat. And then go get help. And the guy can drop the coat in here. He can reach through his legs and pull the coat up and keep and, and fold it on top of him to keep himself warm. That's possible. I've, I've, I've done the crime scene reenactment. So that's possible. So to me, the clue in this case is that the coat that he took off, that he couldn't have taken off here, somehow came down here after the fact he got here. And the only way that coat could get down here with him is because it was thrown down after the fact. That's the thing. I don't understand the shoe thing. I say it could be that the guy was holding him by the feet and one of the shoes popped off and fell. And then once he was down here, the guy had the other shoe. Maybe both shoes popped off, but one fell in. And then he's got this other shoe and he goes, shit, I got to get rid of this. And he goes someplace and just chucks it. Why he wouldn't report this to the police immediately. Maybe he thought, oh my God, they're going to accuse me of trying to kill this guy. So I'm not going to report it to the police. I'm just going to run. Maybe, maybe even had the keys in his hand and put it back in the car and then ran and threw the, threw the, uh, threw the shoe and ran away. Now this is completely, I'm just making up a story here. But, because I don't know, I honestly do not know. But what I do have a problem with is mostly the coat. Because again, the guy cannot remove the coat down here. So he would have to remove the coat out there. And if he came in here and then got stuck, there is no way in God's earth that coat could get down here unless somebody dropped it to him. Therefore, I think two people are involved I don't know why they're involved. I don't know why another person was there. I don't know what they were trying to do. It doesn't look like they were trying to kill him because if they wanted him dead, they're not going to give him the coat. <laughs> you know what I mean? What's the point? They would just take the coat and the other shoe and run off and chuck it someplace. They wouldn't have given him the coat. So that to me is the crucial piece of evidence that to me indicates he went down for some reason, which we do not know on his own. There was a second person who I think helped him. I think he didn't think he was going to get stuck down there. I think they, I think somebody was holding him. Now, could the girl do this? The, the teacher, 
she, he could have asked her to try to do that and she's just not strong enough to hold him and boy, boy was that a stupid idea um let's go back to this thing all right he went she left on the 24th he went missing on the 24th it is possible that she, he arrived before she left they keep saying she's gone but i don't know that that's true he might have arrived before they le she left there could have been something that happened and for whatever reason she had to help him you know down into the thing and then she couldn't hold on to him and then he said send me and she was terrified after that and she just never reported it because she knew she thought she, she would be accused or somebody else it had nothing to do with her she was already gone and for some reason he came to the place to see her she wasn't there something happened something fell down that thing I, I don't know what the fell down the thing is um the best i can come up with is actually the car keys it's the only thing i can think of that makes any sense he tried to retrieve um because if he tried to retrieve anything else it probably was still down there maybe if he tried to retrieve car keys and handed them back up the person would have the car keys and the other shoe and then they just say i'm just going to put the car keys in the car and and throw the shoes someplace and run away I don't know. I honestly do not know. But I do believe there was a second person involved because of the coat. That coat to me is the number one piece of evidence because there's no other reason for it to be there except that somebody dropped it down to him. And certainly if you're trying to murder somebody, you don't you're not going to give them their coat. <laughs> you know, and murder just doesn't make sense. This is just a crazy way to try to murder somebody. I I don't believe it for a minute. So I think and he doesn't have enough injuries. So I believe he had to have willingly gotten down into the thing and then couldn't get back out and then somebody he said Sent, drop me the coat try to keep try to keep me warm go go get get help and then for whatever reasons they didn't get help and that's a good question but that that's my be best theory of analyzing a case with pitiful information <laughs> and, and uh, a lot of questionable stuff that i i really don't know but the coat that to me it's the coat thing. It just, it just, that coat thing just, uh, that stands out to me as the number one issue. So anyway, let me see what more things you have to say. I thought about that. I did think about that, Lisa. Maybe the girl dropped a ring in the normal side of the toilet and he agreed to get it for her. Um, I actually, you know, that's a, actually a good one. Um, because, oh, I want to mention this to you. Okay. Let's talk about the problem, the problem with uh, squat toilets. All right how pleasant this is okay one of the problems with squat toilets is if you're squatting over them you have to be very careful that you don't pull your pants down and your shit falls out of your pockets people do lose their keys and they, they even mentioned losing their keys on this in the squat toilet money in the squat toilet wallets in the squat toilet i think a shoe is not going to fall off your foot that's not going to happen so how the shoe got in there has a hole it's on the other side but yes he, she could have dropped something in there and he could have tried to help her get it um, I would think they would have found the, the, the ring unless, see, unless, um, outside he, she, he tried to crawl in there and he said, hold my feet because it's really tight. Just hold my feet. And he got a hold of the ring and managed to hand it up to her and she got it. And then he fell in. And that was that I'm surprised. I would be surprised she didn't call the police at that point to try to save his life. If they're friends, I mean, they're it's weird because you would think um unless they thought they were going to be accused of something and then ran away uh and, 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 but you know i haven't got a good i haven't got a good answer for that it's just that um she dropped her phone no that though this was 30 years ago i don't think they had those things <laughs> wait a minute 19 what's up 19 hold on 19 do we have phones by then 1989 I, ha I, I, I will say that I remember working at a hosp uh, hospital on call about 1990s and I had, a, I had a pager because we didn't have those. So uh, maybe he thought, I'll never fall in, it's tight, but then he did. Yes, but where, okay, I'm gonna ask you again. How did the coat get on top of his body? That is the, uh, oftentimes when there's, a, when there's a case and I say there's one clue that stands out to me above anything else, this is, this is the one in this case. Now, the, the shoe being somewhere else, okay, um, let's say Benny has a good point that he, had, he was hypothermic. He started going crazy, started ripping, ripping things off and he 
or and he rep, lost a shoe is ripping who ripped one shoe up but not the other or maybe um maybe it's true that he was somebody was chasing him and he lost one shoe but when he gets to the place and okay he can't fit in with the coat I, that's a great point so he takes the coat off either either it can't fit in with the coat or he doesn't want his coat ruined or both takes the coat off once he gets down there he cannot retrieve the coat and the coat was up against him now and and it's not just dropped in it's not like somebody later on let's say um let's say he was dead in there and and then the excavators came and said oh look at this coat we'll shove it in there with him that doesn't make sense because he was holding the coat to his chest so somehow it got down this thing he was able to reach for it and then folded it and kept it on him to try to keep warm somebody had to drop the coat in i can't get away from that i can't come up with any other explanation for how the coat got in there so um let's see uh maybe it was part of the plan that the other person would send his coat down afterwards when he suddenly fell in he yelled for it yeah well i don't know what plan that would be but I would think that he did yell for it. I would think he would say, oh, I'm stuck in here. I can't get out. Um, go for help. Oh, send me, throw my coat down so I can keep warm while you go for help. That would make sense. But instead of going for help, because clearly he was in here for two days before anybody found him, instead of going for help, that person, in my opinion, took the other shoe and chucked it and maybe put the keys back in the car. I have no proof of any of this. So I cannot say that's what happened, but the coat tells me there was a second person there who gave him the coat. Um, just strange the other person didn't get help. He could have been saved. Very sad. Yeah, I, I find that, I mean, yes, except for, okay, there's a, I say, only thing I can think of is they thought they would be accused of trying to kill him. Um, Maybe he did want to kill him. <laughs> you know what I mean? Maybe he was, I don't know. I can't, I can't come up with a good reason for that. Um, why somebody would just run away. But I don't know. They didn't really like him. I don't know. Uh, but the coat can't get down there. The coat fell in, so he went to get it. Okay, and let me, let me think about this. Okay, okay, hold on. Okay, I'm going to think. I'm going to have a drink. I'm going to think because this is how you figure things out. His coat fell in. So he went to get it. Okay. Um, he was also wearing no shirt. So, ha so if he was still wearing a shirt and his coat fell in, he could take, okay, he could take off the shirt. It doesn't look like something that the shirt, the, the coat would fall into. It's a very narrow, and if you had a winter coat, it wouldn't fall into it. You would have to push it down to some extent, I would think, um, for, for, for the coat to get in there. Um, because I, I just don't think it would fall in there. And so far down that he couldn't retrieve it. He could, it could fall in partially, like, you know, just halfway part piece in, you could just pull it back out. So I, I find that probably unlikely, but a good thought. Mm, yeah, uh, it's it's a it's a possibility, but I'm, I I can't quite think about that. Um, oh, wait a minute. The pipe is wide open, no cover, so as one is walking, something could fall in. Well, there's another interesting problem, Lisa. The claim is <laughs> is that the teacher. There's two, there were two different stories. Supposedly, one story was the teacher saw the shoe, which I still don't understand how she sees the shoe because usually the hole is here and the shoe would be here. So I don't, I don't get it, but maybe it was a different style toilet. Okay. Um, she sees a shoe, so she goes, oh, my God, that's creepy. She goes outside. The first story is she picks, she lifts up the heavy top on the, the pipe and pulls it away, looks down and sees, sees a foot that foot sitting there. Then it said, no, no, no. She never pulled the cover off. The cover was already off. Okay. 
So the cover being already off makes more sense in the sense that if he took it off and crawled in, in other words, in that case, nothing fell in. The guy was a Looney Tune, took it off, took half his clothes, I still doesn't make any sense, and crawled in. He would have taken it off and it was not be able to put back on. But the coat problem is still there. All right, so, so the other possibility is that the top was off to begin with. Uh, supposedly this company comes by and they pull the tops off and do the flushing and all that stuff. It's possible they forgot to put the top back on. And because the top was not back on, something was able to fall in. Or, or he went in to use her bathroom. She was actually there. He went in to use her bathroom. Like you say, his keys, his car keys fell out when he was using the bathroom. They fell down here. And then he went outside and said, hey, let's take the top off. I'll crawl down there to get the car keys and I'll help. Everything went wrong. And she ran away. That's a possibility. Um, but yes, the cover was off as far as I know. Um, are there any sim similar cases? <laughs> Not Molly that I've ever heard of. Um, also, teacher could be lying. They, maybe they were having an affair and he was trying to hide. Oh, uh, I would. They could have been having an affair, although supposedly she and her boyfriend are getting along great. But even if they were having an affair, why would he hide in a toilet? That, that really doesn't make any sense. Um, oh, Lisa's ha heading out. Uh, bye, Lisa. Gotta go. Love that you found a possible explanation that fitted all the facts that never occurred to me. That's what we're here for. Well, I don't know that I have a good explanation. All I can tell you is that the coat should not be down there unless somebody dropped it to him. That's it. That's the thing that sets it off for me that the second person was involved for whatever reasons. And, and, and somebody had at some point had to have some compassion for him because if you want to kill the dude, you're not going to give him a coat. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're too bad, dude. You know, <laughs> you're going to freeze your butt off. So somebody had to do that. And then for whatever reasons didn't follow through. I don't know. It's, it's just very peculiar. Um, very peculiar. Okay, let's see. K-Rob says, maybe in Japan, accidents like this are too shameful or embarrassing for people to seek help. A culture thing. Maybe as to why the other person with him did not get help. Well, that is possible. Uh, I don't know. This is, this is one of the, this is a cultural issue. And if anybody from Japan comes and sees this video, I always find it very important. Um, this is my Asia Oceana Friday nights. And although I've been in some places in the world, I have spent a lot of time in India. Um, uh, but I have not been to Japan. I was supposed to go to Japan when I wrote my book, The Profiler. Uh, Japan loved my book. It's actually published in Japanese. Uh, and they were going to invite me over to do this really cool tour and television stuff. And then the big tsunami hit and ruined the whole up. I was so I was so angry. I wanted to go anyway, but that's what happened. So I didn't get to go to Japan, but I do not know the Japanese culture. And, I, and of course, we're also talking about the Japanese culture 30 years ago. And we're talking about a Japanese culture in that town. So we have to look at all different aspects of this. Is it possible that the guy didn't trust the police or the woman didn't trust the police? And after he got stuck in there, the person said, oh, my God, if I report this, they're going to. I'm going to end up in prison for 10 years. I'm going to end up in prison. And, and you know, it's not my fault this happened. He made a bad choice. I, I don't want to go to prison. It's just, you know, they're not going to be able to get him out anyway. You know, it, it, you know, he's stuck. He's already frozen to death. I, I can't help him. And therefore, I'm going to help myself. I don't know. So if you're from Japan, tune in on that. Give me some comments below so I can, there's some reason for that. Um, uh, Lisa says, think of a reason why you take your top and coat off in that situation. Well, the, the, two, yeah, the two reasons I come up with is the one which the coat will block getting in there because it's too fat. It's too thick. So you take the coat off so you can access because he's, he's already got shoulders that are barely getting in. But again, his shoulders do fit. So folks who keep saying he couldn't fit in, yes, he can. <laughs> so his shoulders can go in, but with a coat on, they probably couldn't. Now, the shirt, on the other hand, why he took the shirt off may simply be because he thought it would get dirty and disgusting. He thought, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take my shirt off. Maybe he liked his shirt. You know, I have, I have things that I like. I don't, I'm like, okay, I'm just going to take that off too. 
Uh, I'm going to, I'm just, especially if you think you're only going to be in there for two minutes, just hold my feet. I'm going to go down. I'm going to grab whatever it is. And then I'm, I'm going to come back up because he's, his feet are halfway out. So maybe he thinks it's not that hard to get back out and made a very bad, you know, uh, estimation of the situation. And then when he couldn't get back out, he was just screwed. And, um, and then he didn't have a shirt on. And I don't know what happened to that shirt because I, I don't have the police reports on it. So very frustrating. Um, no scratches. Only scratches are a little couple, few little scratches, apparently on his knees and on his elbow, uh, elbows. And if you look at the, the background, oh, there it is. Well, right here, right here. All right. You see, it has knees are right up on here. If he's trying to get out of there, his knees could get scratched up. And his elbows, he's probably trying to turn. So that would get scratched up. Nothing else would get hurt. So that's why there is never a suspicion that he was actually murdered because there would be a lot more stuff going on. He's just stuck down there. That's all there is. He's stuck down there. Poor guy. Poor guy. I mean, just horrible. Um, not his shoulders. No. Um, and, you know, I don't know that his shoulders, when he goes down there and turns, it, 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 I don't know that his shoulders would do much because it's just, you're just... You know, I, and, I, and again, I don't have the autopsy report. I'm, I'm, I'm getting this off of Medium <laughs> and, and a couple other YouTube state, YouTube shows, which, you know, they're getting it from someplace else, which is probably, it's like telephone game. You know, you get it from, you know, you start telling the story and, and they're not, they're not um, accessing the real information. It's not like they said, okay, I'm going to go get the police report now. I'm going to get the true, the autopsy report. No, and neither can I, I can't do it because it's, it's, it's it's in Japan 30 years ago, and unless they turned it into English so I can read it, I can't access that either. So, I, but I'm admitting it. The difference between some of these, some of these um, uh, blogs and some of the YouTube stuff is they just tell this as if it's the truth instead of saying, I really don't know. <laughs> and I really don't know much of the information. What I do know is the measurements here appear to be accurate and I have done my crime scene reconstruction and I can pretty much say he went down here um, and he went around here. Uh, there was no force, uh, excessive force on that and the coat had to be dropped in later. Those are the things I can tell you. Why the shoe dropped down here, again, the, the most logical thing to me, the most logical, why a shoe would end up down here, only one, is because one shoe ended up outside Where's my picture here? If, a guy, if somebody's holding his feet, trying to just hold on to him, because he says, hold on to me, hold, hold my legs. Um, and, and here's another thing. There may be a reason he didn't take his pants off, because if he took his pants off, then he would be exposed. His, maybe his genitals would end up being exposed and other things, and he did not want that. Now, one could say that's because a woman was involved, and therefore he didn't want the lady to see these things, or it could just be because it just didn't, he just didn't want people to see that part of his body. So he left his pants on and it's possible that the person was holding onto his legs and as he lost his, they lost their grip and he couldn't keep his hands up. One, sh if you go like this, see, see, look at, look at where he's at here. See right up here. If you're holding like this and, and then you lose your grip, this happens. One of the shoes could have flipped out. One of the shoes could have fallen down. And that's why one shoe ended up floating when the water came in the water just starts coming up and the the shoe just floats that may be why so the best analysis i can come up with because of the coat is someone was there with him they tossed the coat down because he asked for it to keep warm one of the shoes fell in in the attempt to get down there and the other shoe fell on the ground and if that person panicked and thought oh my god they're going to accuse me and put me in prison they're going to say i did something to this guy i don't think he's going to live for more than whatever I'm going to run away. He might just take the shirt, uh, the shoe. If there are any socks, he might take those. God knows where they are. And run off and, and just toss them. Um, that's the best thing I can come up with with this thing. But I do believe there's a second person involved. I can't, I can't, I can't believe he, this is, you know, because of the coat. Because of the coat. Um, because of the coat. Um, Molly says, I wonder if the squatter toilet could be removed. If so, he could have more easily been put in there along. No, no, <laughs> no, no, it's not happening. No, that, that if you look back at, um, no, he wasn't murdered. And also take a, take a look how, how narrow 
the 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 um it's a good question though let me go let me go back and find this this picture um this is 36 centimeters you can get down here because i i measured it and all that 20 centimeters you can't get through there it's impossible there's no way they could have stuffed him down this toilet and put the toilet back it's not it's not happening but good point because you want to examine the different possibilities but no that would be absolutely impossible um uh, the pipes can be moved. The cleaning method is to open the lock lid by the cleaner at the end of each day to remove. The pipes can't be moved. The pipes cannot be moved. The, the pipes are, the pipes, um, hold on a second. Uh, the pipes are in the ground. They had to use excavating tools to break out this stuff to get him out because they're under the ground. So nobody's got nobody's gonna murder him and do all this this is this is just insanity that's you know one of the, the the points about profiling and analysis and this is what i fight against with the internet is that just because it could be something that in a million one in a million years could happen it you know it's not a theory we should go with because it, it, it is not sensible and there's no reason why anybody is going to remove pipes, put his body in pipes, put them back. And it is all, that's all, that's all, <laughs> and that makes no sense whatsoever. Um, but this is correct. Um, this part, oh, wait a minute. I'm sorry. The pipes, no, the pipes can't be moved. The pipes are there. The cleaning method is to take this top off and suction out whatever's in there and then put the top back on. That's all that happens. That's all that happens. Um, if he got in, technically he should be able to get out. No, he cannot get out, Lisa. That's the whole point. Once you get down, once he got down here, he couldn't push back up. And he got, he came around, he came around, he gets stuck in this position, he can't turn over. He may have thought, I will be able to switch positions. I'll be able to get my head over here. I'll be able to turn around somehow. He might have thought this was like this. You know, he might not have realized how how tight the pipes were. If the pipe was up here, yes, he could have just simply turned over and then then come back, I'm oh, sorry, come back up the pipe. He could have crawled back up, you know, up this way and somebody could have pulled him out if it had been here, but it's not here, it's here. He's stuck under there like this and he cannot move. He can't turn, he can't turn over, he can't get up. He's stuck in that position. That's why he died because there was no place for him to go at all absolutely none um yeah that's correct he can't get out because of his, his position not his size he wasn't he was five foot seven um average size guy um but there there was just no way there was no way out of there and I, you know again i'd say he might have thought you know i mean here's a question how many of you know how big the pipes are you know any place he might have you know first of all i think when he came down with his hands here right and let me let me let me show you that picture again this is this is this is you know you have to understand that in certain in certain instances people just make stupid choices okay so that's that's incorrect that did not happen okay this is what happened okay so he comes down here but his hands are down here if if there was something he was trying to retrieve and he said look just hold on to my legs because the legs are sticking out mind you the legs are not way down here it's not that tall. You can actually put your hands down and you can do a handstand in here with your feet coming out, okay? So now he's he's doing a handstand in here and he's got, he can even get a hold of whatever he's trying to get a hold of. He may be able to push, you know, not me because I can't do a handstand, but he's a dude. Maybe he could push with one hand and grab whatever it was and he could, I don't, th I don't know that he could get it up there though. That's, that's, that's the problem I have because it looks too narrow for him to be able to put his hand back up. So... That doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me, um, unless he thought he could do it. But then what the hell was he down there to get? Um, I don't know. Uh, uh, I don't know. Uh, I mean, theoretically, he could have come down here, gotten some car keys, and then held them up over here, and somebody could reach to the toilet and gotten the car keys out. <laughs> that could have happened. But the problem is, when he got here, he could not get back up and the, whoever it was couldn't pull him back up. So he just had to crawl in to the, to this to this position and then he just had nowhere to go. He had absolutely nowhere to go. But why 
he ended up down there. We, we, I don't know that we'll ever know that. All I can say is that the coat shouldn't have ended up. The coat on his chest means to me somebody else was there. And the fact that one of the shoes was far away means to me somebody else was there. I just don't know the rest of it. And I, I probably can't ever answer those questions um, because whatever. Now, it's possible if I were working with the police department, I go over to Japan and they translate everything into English for me and I'm able to see everything exactly. I'd say, aha, that, that's, that's what happened. You know, um, you did an interview with somebody and they're, they're sketchy as hell and, and they're saying these things. And I'm like, wait a minute, something fishy. He, he got in there and he handed up the whatever, the t your, your ring, you know, that you dropped in the toilet uh, or, or the car keys and you put them back in the car. Oh, I know what happened now. But, uh, you know, I don't know what happened. All I know is that that coat shouldn't be there unless somebody else was there with him. And the, the, the shoe falling in and the other shoe being far away means to me, unless Benny's right, he had hypothermia someplace else, lost one shoe, comes running out, takes off his coat. But then again, why is the coat not down? You know, he's not going to throw the coat down first and then he's going to crawl in on top of the coat. Does anybody have the shirt? See, it gets all, gets all very convoluted. Um, and then he'd have one shoe on. I, I'm not, I can't go with the hypothermia thing because it, it seems too extreme. Uh, people do get hypothermic. They, they do rip off all their clothes, but there's no good reason for him to do that in the circumstances he was in during the, during the day. So, yeah, I, it, it seems to me more like he went in there voluntarily and there was a second person there. But I don't know. I mean, I can't prove any of this. <laughs> It's just a, it's just a fascinating case, and um, I would, I know, I, I wish we had an answer to it, but it is one of the more unique cases. Uh, but that's the closest I can come, as I do believe there's a second person who dropped the coat down to help him keep warm, and then for whatever reasons, changed their mind. And I wonder who that was. I really do. I wonder who that was because that's the only explanation I can really come up with that fits the evidence that we have so anyway that that's it for today um i think it's just a really cool case and and uh um when may looks at this case because this is a case she was really interested in and benny too um i I'm, I'm curious to see the comments below uh, whether my theory about it had to be two people um involved in this for whatever reasons whether people agree with that or they don't and uh, it's it's a it's a it's a strange one that's all i can say <laughs> It's super strange. So anyway, that's it for tonight. And uh, also, if you haven't seen the Madeleine McCann thing I did this evening, I already have that up um, because there's news in the Madeleine McCann case. Um, and so I put up a video on that. I'm going to put this video up tomorrow morning just because I don't want to put up two videos in one day. And that was a news video, so I did that. But I'm going to put this, uh, this one up tomorrow morning. And then we'll have Sunday. Sunday, I'm going to do Jimmy Savile. Uh, I'm going to analyze Jimmy Savile. What kind of person was he? What were his behaviors? Is he a pedophile or is he not a pedophile? What, how, how many crimes did he commit over those 50 some years? Um, what do I think of the Netflix documentary? So I'm going to do all that on Sunday at 3 p.m. Eastern time. It's going to be very interesting. So I hope I see you there uh, on Sunday. Um, and again, if you're new to this, this uh, channel and you'd love to participate in one of my six per month live shows like everybody here has been you know jumping in um please do you know click below on patreon for five bucks a month you get the six shows live i do that to keep out the creepy people and also to have a nice community and it also supports the channel so so do that and uh or if you don't want to do that just just like and subscribe <laughs> i'm easy um okay <laughs> good night everybody good night <laughs> so uh have a have a more pleasant evening than the show was about <laughs> it was a pretty pretty crappy show okay <laughs> good night everybody hope i see you on sunday bye <laughs>